Morning YouTube, it's time for some daily vegan tea. Recording this one from Latin Academy. Latin Academy will be finishing up tomorrow for me, which is exciting. Uh, looks like we have a solid hand, and uh, in case you've forgotten, we're still on that weird experimental ancient tomb D&T build without Wasteland. We're 0-2 currently. We'll see how we feel about the deck list by the end of this league. Don't be elves. Don't do it. Okay, that's not elves. But this still may not bode well for me. Probably not infect seeing verde catacombs. Probably gonna be some either BAMP mid-range deck or Maverick. Yeah, that's fine. No noble hierarch attack. I mean they're probably facing them. That that doesn't make sense. Because Dahlia is in play, so they can't cast pretty much anything. Oh, unless... No, they're not going to be like a Force of Will deck with Thalia. That's poor synergy. I think that's just a missed point of damage. Or they have Sword of the and they forgot about their own Thalia. I really wish I had another land. I would smooth things out a lot here and make my decisions easier. Stoneforge for Jitte isn't superb with the Thalia on the other side of the table. Like, I can bounce that with Caracas, but my man is tight as it is. I don't know that I want to revoke the Hierarch for sure. But I think that's what I'm going to do. I'll feel kind of silly if they follow up with a knight, but like with me leading on planes, I think if they had a knight, they'd play knight over Thalia. If I had more mana, Stoneforge is absolutely the play. I wish I had an ancient tomb, so that I could have like thought a heretic thard that turn. That that would have felt very good, because it would have been like some built-in wasteland protection. Because so a wasteland on this Caracas is something they're incentivized to do because their Thalia is on the battlefield. Yikes. So the good news is, with my opponent fetching triple basic, there's a better chance that they're just green-white Maverick instead of green-white-black Maverick. So I think the way that I'm getting out of this like, has to involve my opponent being bad. Or them not having another land. So I've revoked the Hierarch. So they don't just have four mana to go equip and come in. I can't put myself into the situation where I will get Jitte counters first. 
Because if I play Stoneforge's turn to fetch my own Jitte, they'll just hold their Thalia back, and I can't get in there. Alright, so I think the way I win involves Stoneforge Mystic for Jitte now, them missing a land, Me blocking with the Stoneforge, drawing a land to Restoration Angel. My Stoneforge out again, get another piece of equipment, and then put the Jitte on the Restoration Angel. Fudge. Oh, uh, well, I'm really glad it was the port and not the Caracas. But that severely hampers my ability to do anything that matters which is unfortunate. Uh, Ancient Tomb would be a hot draw. It would be so good, because I can bounce Thalia into Tomb, Ancient Tomb, cast Jete, equip Jete, get counters, and then insulate myself from my opponent's counters. Oh, come on, attack with that Thalia. Yay. Um, do I want to take this damage? I sort of want to take this damage to, like, make sure they can't recast that Thalia. Yeah, I'm going to let that happen. Maybe that was wrong, though. Actually, that was wrong. Because if they recast the Thalia, then they're not putting in the Jitte, and I buy myself more time. Yeah, well, that wasn't the... That wasn't what I needed. But this is fine. Let me get super active at Battle Skull, though. So I play out the Thalia here to Cathar. It's three points of first strike are super relevant on the current board. That that wasn't summoning sick. You you could have put in Jete. I do not understand. All right. So, moving forward, I'm going to start acting under the assumption that my opponent is either distracted or inexperienced. Because I missed a Noble Hierarch attack. And they missed putting in a piece of equipment with Jete. Or with Stoneforge. Yeah, now if I draw a land, like, my god, I'm so in this game. Uh, I didn't, unfortunately. So this is probably the turn where I need to put in my own Jete. And I need to hope that they do not draw a basic land. A fetch land is fine because it will enter tapped. Yeah. So I know my opponent has Jitte and Thalia in hand.
my life total is a little bit precious. But I don't think this game is about life totals. Well, that's not great for me. At least the lands are going to enter tapped. So the good news is, I can still get Jitte counters. So I can equip Jitte to Revoker, crash in with Revoker, Mom can't protect. Then I can remove the Jitte to probably Thalia Heretic Cathar, use a counter to kill the Mother of Runes and Noble Hierarch. All right, that's the point. Still, I think, going to beat out the scavenger news that's on the other side of the table. So I'm going to put two creatures into the graveyard. There will be a third creature in the graveyard. But between my first strike on Thalia and the Jitte counters that I'll get. Oh, no blocks. I expected this to die. Well, that's quite good for me. So we need to get this mom out of there so they can't give protection and get something through. Then I need to equip this here. All right. And my opponent has given me so much time in regards to stabilizing my board. That's more or less as expected. Sure, that's fine. Wait, is there, are you like considering attacking into my first striker with Jitte counters? Okay, yeah, that's, that's what I thought. Oh, that is gonna be nice. Uh, do they have a third basic forest? That is the question. Actually, it doesn't really matter, because they played their own Thalia, which means it can be harder for them to actually get Jisse counters. Okay, well let's let's start here because this is happening. I just need to keep these the number of Jitte counters I have continuously ticking up.
I think I'm just going to sit on these counters and develop my board. I'm not sure if just playing a Thalia is better to just have another first striker in play in case something goes wrong and help gum up the board more, or if I should just play Stoneforge and get my batter skull. I think I like getting my batter skull. Although if I play the Thalia, it makes it so that a Swords to Plowshares just becomes uncastable. Not uncastable, but significantly worse for them. I'm going to play Thalia. Play, like, playing the other Stoneforge is better on a turn where I have access to 4 mana. Although I guess the counter argument is if I miss on land for another turn, then having the batter skull in hand gives me something to do with my three mana that's more effective. But I guess it's kind of a wash. Well, you just gave me a very important piece of information, friend. So thank you for that. I think I'm just going to hold tight with my Jetai counters. So much to do with my brain. Okay, I guess that was poor on my end. I should have foreseen that block because like it requires me to use a Jitte counter anyway. And the other one might have pushed some damage. So this is going to be end of turn put in Jote. I'm still not really worried about that. I've got that more than covered. There's four creatures in graveyard. So like even if they go for an equip on scavenging boots plus some eating, I can still take care of that. Australia. 
green sun for a stupid big number? Well, I guess not stupid big. So that's going to get a knight, which will enter tapped. So again, not that big of a deal. Uh, if they have a reclamation sage, I have to make some moves here. So that's going to try to destroy my jete. And I have to make some choices about what to knock off the field. I can hold my opponent's Jitte at bay with my first strike creatures and then try to like close out this game in the air. How do I want to do this? I can go like one, two, three, four and take three bodies off the battlefield, or I can go these two. I think I like taking maximum numbers of bodies off the battlefield. So let's start with this ooze. And I know removing the Noble Hierarch doesn't really do a ton, but it allows me to reset this Revoker to their Jitte if I need to do that via my Restoration Angel. Which I can just do now. So just like Palace Jailer away one of their bodies, and then Restoration Angel Palace Jailer the other next turn, leaving my first strikers back, both of them. Which I almost like better. Attack with all of these. All right, and my, my opponent just throws in the towel here. Uh, I did I did not I did not necessarily deserve that game. I got that game, uh, but my my opponent's cards were plenty good to just absolutely wreck me. Uh, so I'm going to be looking at boarding in something like seven cards. Rest in Peace is kind of like one of those things where it can be good, it can be bad. Um, but it's not consistently good enough that I'm probably going to want it when I have access to so many things that I might otherwise like. Um, the Path to Exiles are the weakest cards of this pile, and I may not board in both. Uh, so Thalia, pretty bad in this matchup. That's going to be my first thing to pull. Thalia Heretic Cathar is medium. Like, uh, it's obviously very good in the sorts of scenarios we saw in that game where, like, the first strike is relevant. But in other games where they get, like, an active knight and they can just search up Caracas and bounce it, it feels so bad. So essentially, I'm going to cut one of these for sure, and then the question becomes, do I want Path to Exile, or do I want more bodies? If I cut both of these, I end up at 19 creatures, which isn't a super acceptable creature count. So 
So what do I want to do? I might just split. I kind of need some bodies on the ground since I'm playing double palace jailer to help stall out their, their small bodies. Maybe I'm supposed to do something like this even and split Pithing Needle and Path to Exile because too many needle effects is not great, but you want to be able to shut off their Jittes. I've talked myself into this. Uh, this is going to be a turn three Jitte Connect hand with the Ancient Tomb, uh, so that is stellar. Not mom, please. Oh, and I get a vial. Merry Christmas to me. I imagine my opponents like gotta play Stone Fortune Mystic this turn in order for their hand to be keepable. All right. You know, uh, a strong card in the matchup. Am I willing to take two damage this turn in order to play Stoneforge and Aetherwell? I don't think so, because then I expose myself to a Wasteland. Alternatively, I could just port them. I think I'm going to be aggressive here. Did they, do they just keep their hand based on the size of a couple of big things? Do you Plague Engineer? Are you going to put Plague Engineer on either Core or Artificer? Because that's fine with me. Sorry, sorry, Plague Engineer. Like, I'm connecting with Jitte this turn, getting some Jitte counters, and I'll be able to kill that at will. This is a nice contingency plan as well. My opponent didn't know this, but like, if they had put it on Core or Artificer, I wouldn't have gotten gotten in this turn. Alright, so now I have to ask myself the question, do I just want to remove the Plague Engineer right now, or do I just want to use one out counter and get the Scavenging Ooze out? at a reduced rate. I think I want to hold my counters and use it to hit the Plague Engineer, because it also plays around them going like fourth land and Jitte. And I like try to give my opponent some degree of credit and assume that like they kept his hand for some reason. Maybe that reason was Plague Engineer. So if they go to combat and attack him with both, I'll, I'll remove the Plague Engineer. Make them use mana if they want damage. Uh, fetching planes there seems very questionable. As does tapping in a way that doesn't leave up a green source for scavenging ooze. Uh, 
Oh, nice, we got no attacks due to the vial. Go ahead and take that out. Okay, now what? So I probably go for the equip, attack in, and see what happens. If they block with the knight, I go pump, pump, kill the knight, and they have to like double block. And then I can use the remaining. Okay, so what if they double block with knight ooze? That's six. So I have to use one Jitte counter or my ether vial to blow out. Yeah, that's fine. I could also just like pre-combat cast my council's judgment. Get the knight off the table. Since it's most annoying to get with the Jitte counter. Yeah, let's let's do that. So I'm gonna go council's judgment, get the knight, use two Jitte counters, kill plague engineer, attack in with stone forge mystic, and then get essentially wipe their board. All right, are you going to force this to leave the table? I guess that's the question. You are, and that's fine with me. Like if they had left a green open, they could have caused me to use another Jitte counter. Uh, do I just want to blink out one of their lands? I don't think so. I mean, I'll take it. Not really what I was planning on using that for. Like, I was planning on holding that as protection for the Jitte itself. Because now this puts them in a spot where they could, like, say, cast a Plague Engineer and put it on Elemental. And that becomes relevant. Yeah, that's fine. You're not anywhere close to connecting with your own Jitte. Sword of Light and Shadow is pretty good, but I can play around that pretty effectively. Ooh, Thalia Heretic Cathar is not a bad draw. Um, so I can go... Equip Jitte, put in Thalia, Heretic, Cathar. Take some damage to port them. So I can go. Vile and Equip off these two. Port off these two. Put in Thalia, Heretic, Cathar. Yeah. I 
I'm going to need to think about whether or not I just want to fire off these JITE counters right now. And I believe the answer is yes, because if they were to draw a batter's skull, I don't want to give them the opportunity to put that in. That can be an annoyance. Uh, Nathalia Heretic Cathar can go into play on the, their turn after I've ported them to not give them a chance to use their mana effectively. Alright, and my opponent just scoops it up there. I was very, very in control of that one. Well, so, uh, that's a great match that goes to show you. You need to play tight, even if you're really favored. See you again tomorrow.